for the families of graphs. In that case, the extreme number, in, we forbid any uh, graph from script F. So that's, it, it's defined analogous. And it follows by theorems of Mantel, Turan, Erdes, and Stone that this uh, set of, uh, or, or the Turan density, is described uh, as follows, where T is the minimum chromatic number of, of a graph in script F. So I just look for the graph that has the minimum chromatic number, and that decides the Turan density. So the set of all Turan densities is this set. Uh, I will mention briefly uh, some uh, facts about multigraphs. It's not so well studied area. There are some problems which seems to be interesting or hard. Uh, so I don't know too much, so I won't speak about it too long. So Q multigraph is a multigraph without loops with edges of multiplicity at most Q. And the density of a multigraph is defined analogously. So, so if the, uh, we see three edges, we count three on for that place. So that means that the densities can be anything between zero and Q. And one can define all these parameters I talked about accordingly. And then one can ask, what is the set of the Turan densities for uh, Q multigraphs? And it, Quite surprisingly, already for Q equal to 2, this question appears to be much harder, and no explicit description, even of the set by 2, is known. Uh, so it has been proved by Erdes, Brown, and Simonovich in 1985, and then again by Sidorenko, who gave a nice streamlined proof in 1993 that set by 2 is well ordered. Uh, for Q equal to 3, I just was looking at it re relatively re recently with a student and visitor Paul Horn, and uh, we tried to show, yeah, we tried to decide how it is, and we could only show that within the interval 0, 2, the set by 3 is also well ordered and has type omega to the omega, so it's much richer than, than for, uh, uh, say, for graphs. And, but to, for example, we know nothing about the structure of this pi 3 within the interval 2 and 3. In particular, it would be interesting to decide whether there exists a sequence of multigraphs or multigraph families, maybe, uh, one should say, which converges from upwards to 2. So that means whether the set, that would mean that pi 3 is not well ordered and 2 is the reason for that order. But uh, we couldn't, we were not smart enough to decide it. For Q bigger or equal than 4, one can show that the set is not well ordered, so it has some weird structure. So not only we cannot describe the actual numbers, but we cannot even uh, understand the order type. And uh, it was proved by Sidorenko and me, and we gave more examples in the uh, recent paper. So that's all I know, so let's move to hypergraphs. Uh, hypergraph, what is a, I will talk just about three uniform hypergraphs today. So what is a hypergraph? It has a vertex set, it has some edges, here they are, the edges have cardinality 3, here is the hypergraph. And again, we can define the extremal number in the same way. So extremal number is the maximum number of edges of a three uniform hypergraph that doesn't <laughs> contain F fixed hypergraph. So once more, if I have a fixed hypergraph, an integer n, I can define again this uh, x of n f. And again, we can consider the limit, which will be the Turan density. We can again ask about uh, the Turan densities. And it was proved by Erdes in 1964 that pi of f is 0 if and only if the three uniform hypergraph is three part i. That means its vertex set can be decomposed into three sets, and edges are of the form that take one vertex from x, one vertex from y, and one vertex from z to z. 
Actually, Paul Erdes once told me that he proved this paper once he went on boat from Italy to Israel. So I think that is what I remember. Only few new particle results are known. Uh, sometimes multigraph results can be helpful tools. So, for example, it's known that uh, Turan density of final plane is three quarters. That was proved by the Kahn and Fioretti. And a little later, Fioretti and Simonovic and Kivash and Sudakov found the precise result. So, found the, uh, not only Turan density, but uh, precise result for every end. So, describe the extremal family. So, once more, to run result for gra hypergraphs, I will talk. Uh, so, so for graph, it looks this way. For three graphs, we know that uh, it, uh, the first gap, so for graphs, it follows, with the look on what I what is the set, that whenever the density is at least zero, strictly bigger than zero, then it is at least one half. So if it is bigger than zero, it must be one half. It follows from the result of R dash, for three graphs, if it is bigger than zero, it must be at least two nines. And Bolova showed in 1974 that indeed two nines is a Turan density. He, he gave two graphs, family of two graphs that uh, proves it. And then a little later, or nine years later, Franklin Pirelli uh, just found one three graph that uh, has Turan density two nines. There is a beautiful and most likely very hard question due to Paul Erdes, uh, who asked, what happens at two nines? Is there a similar gap after zero? So from zero, it jumps to two nines. There is no density between two, zero and two nines. What happens after two nines? Is there a beta bigger than zero, a bit bigger than two nines, so that the interval uh, two nines and beta doesn't contain any Turan density. So is it true or not? It seems to be a very striking problem. Uh, uh, Paul Adesh asked, at that time it was believed that this set must be also well ordered and he proved this, we tried to prove it with Peter Frankl. Then after it was too hard to prove it, we tried to disprove it and we were more successful with that. So, so it's not well ordered. This was before we, we, we showed things with Sidorenko and some of the stuff with Peter was used in Sidorenko's proof as well. Anyway, uh, on the other hand, uh, 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 Barber and Talbot showed a short interval <laughs> in which the set by three is well ordered. So they have a uh, proof uh, based on, on, on their, on, on the, uh, computer, so uh, the flat algebra, and, uh, and they claim this result. Anyway, Picurco's very nice result showed that the set by three has size continuum, so which is much stronger result than ours. This Frankl, interestingly, in order to produce the set of size continuum, he uses the existence of sequences that converge downward. So he uses the result with Frankl. He proved some other nice results. I am not going to talk about them. So that, this is the area. And basically, that's what, what it is known. More is known, but I will not talk about it. Uh, so what are the prominent problems in the area? So very prominent <coughs> problem is what is the Tura number of K4, or what is the Tura number of K4 minus an edge? So let's start with K4 minus an edge. So what it is? So it's four vertices and three edges. Here it is. And what is known, it's known by Frankl and Fieredi, and on the other hand, Barber and Talbot gave the bounds. So Frankl and Fieredi have the construction, lower bound. Talbot has the upper bound, so they are pretty close, but it's not yet decided. So this is the state of art. It would be very interesting to have some real, under, real understanding describing how these Turan numbers are behaving, or why, what, are the, what is the structure. For similarly, for K4, this is known, uh, the lower bound old result of Turan. 
Rasborov again by Fleck algebra, pretty close. I think again in third digit, it's just different. Anyway, so these are known results <coughs> about this basic interesting graph. And uh, now I will get to the main topic of this talk, namely about uniformly dense hypergraphs. <coughs> So since to run problems for hypergraphs are hard, we restrict to class of uniformly dense hypergraphs. I didn't say what it is, and I will not tell you on this slide. Uh, uh, but uh, because uh, and but so it's a class of hypergraphs, uh, and uh, we can define these extremal numbers in a similar way as we did before. Only the one restriction is that the hypergraph H will not be arbitrary hypergraph on n vertices, but we will put some extra condition on that hypergraph. So we will, we will like only certain H, hypergraph H, and among them, we want to take the one which has the maximum number of edges and, uh, and which is a free. Of course, because, yeah, so it's an asymptotic statement. It, 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 is, it has to be defined appropriately. So we will consider various concepts of you, this uniform denseness. And depending on that, we will obtain different results. So this is what I will, what I'm trying, what I will talk about. <coughs> so this is what I said. Right, so this last but one click, just this inequality, means that because I restrict myself to a special class of hypergraphs, the corresponding Tura number will be always more or equal than the general Tura number, because here I am allowed to take maximum over all, here I am allowed only to take maximum over a certain class. And we shall consider various concepts of uniform tensors. So what is the weak concept? The V concept of three, three uniform hypergraph is weakly epsilon P dense if for any three disjoint sets X, Y, Z, if I look on the sets which take one vertex or edges which take one vertex from X, one vertex from Y, and one vertex from Z, their number is at least P percent of all triplets, plus some or minus some error. So, so we insist that uh, for every three subsets, uh, we see the p proportion of the all possible edges, and we subtract something for the error. So of course, this makes sense only, it says something only if the sets are sufficiently large. Because if they are smaller than epsilon, then this segment is void. So this will be the concept of weak epsilon p denseness. Maybe there is a better word for it, but uh, uh, yeah, I didn't find it. So uh, what we will be considering, I talk, talk, uh, talked about it already, we will be interested in largest density p, such that for every epsilon, there exists epsilon weakly dense hypergraph, so it's a hypergraph in our family, that contains no copy of F. And this is the formal definition of what it means, what, what this pi will be. And why we have these funny three dots, these three dots in our mind represent three sets X, Y, Z. Well, you can represent them in various ways, but since we will in, be interested in other concepts of denseness, then uh, this suggested something. So I uh, will ask you for patience to, to tolerate this notation. Uh, so I would like to mention that uh, whatever I will be talking about is also true under the following uh, somewhat weaker definition, yes. namely a somewhat maybe more natural definition that instead of three sets, X, Y, Z, I will just consider one set U, and I will be, I will want that on that set U, I will see a P percent of the edges. However, 
However, because I want to compare this V concept with other concepts that will follow, I will consider three set versions. So that's the only reason. But all the results will, should be true, or should be are true, or this weaker version. <coughs> so what are the examples of weakly dense hypergraphs? So for example, if I take no edges, right? It's not too dense, but it's zero dense, right? So D is zero. Or if I take all edges, then it's one dense. But let's say something more interesting. That the following hypergraph is well known. It was used by Erdes and Heine long ago. And it's a hypergraph arising from a tournament, namely random tournament. So I take a complete graph and randomly orient the edges. And uh, we see that the oriented triangles appear with probability one quarter. So, and I will consider hypergraph made by these triangles which are oriented. And uh, so this is what I said. And, and, and one can show that such a hypergraph is weakly epsilon one quarter dense if n is sufficiently large. So this hypergraph has also another property. It doesn't contain k for minus an edge. This is also well known. So let's try to squeeze there k for minus an edge. So this way, we can put two edges. The only way how we can put two edges, if we try to put there the third edge, no matter how we orient this blue uh, pair, we will run into a problem, and there is no, no three edge there. So meaning that uh, on every four element set, we can see at most two edges. There is no K4, 3 minus an edge. So combining these two facts, HD is weakly epsilon 1 quarter dense, and HD contains no K4, 3 minus an edge, we infer that the lower bound for this weak density for K4, 3 minus an edge is at least 1 quarter. And indeed, it was conjectured by Erdes and Schorsch in 1982 that this is true. Uh, recently, a computer-aided proof uh, op was obtained by Glebov, Kral, and Wallace. Uh, so this is now a theorem. And but I will talk about it a little bit more later. So, so this was about K43 minus an edge. So next natural choice is how is it for k4. So uh, for k4 3 minus an edge we took the tournament what we will take for k4. So consider a set of n vertices one through n and for every vertex i consider a partition of the set i plus 1 through n random partition into red and blue and then take all the triplets of type I, R, B. So uh, vertex I and two follow vertices which are behind it, one red, one blue. And then let's consider this partition EI to be randomly chosen independently of each other. And this way we get three uniform hypergraph, which satisfy for that we didn't need that it is random, but. Uh, yeah. So far, sorry, but we will use it. Right, uh, so this bipartite has, uh, graph has right link of every vertex is bipartite. By right link, I mean the bipartite graph, uh, the, the graph which is formed by pairs, which together with that vertex, with that vertex I, form a triplet. And right link are those who, who vertices who are on the right of that. So it has right link to be a bipartite graph. And that means that no i can be the first vertex of K4, because K4 has the first vertex of the K4 would see a triangle and not a bipartite graph. So it's K4 free. And one can show that this graph, if we take this partition randomly, independently of each other, is epsilon one half that. Again, putting these two things together, uh, Yields the lower bound for this uniform weak density for K4 to be at least one half. So now I will mention a couple of new results. 
and open problems. We have more problems than the results, but somehow uh, we were talking about oh, Yeah, so we will see. These all results are together with Christian Reyer and Matthias Schad, both in Hamburg. So the first thing, what we, the result we had was another proof of the fact that K43 minus NH is but water. And uh, that proof is uh, not used in flat algebra, no computer uh, aided, but it uses hypergraph regularity lemma. Uh, so, um, and actually we get one little benefit, I don't know how, whether it's interested to think or not, namely we get that K43 minus an edge with the property that its first, ver uh, that its apex, by that I mean the vertex which is contained in three edges, is either where first or last in natural order, if I consider H to be. Uh, <coughs> so I have a hypergraph H with H, which has density one quarter plus little bit on integers one through N, and I can find the K43 minus an H, which has first vertex in three edges or last vertex. Uh, the, another result which we got is that we characterize those three uniform hypergraphs which have the density zero. So it's a result analogous to a result of Erdash of 1964. Here it's quite hard, or at least it seemed to our proof. And these hypergraphs are precisely those that uh, can be, their vertex can, can be linearly ordered and their uh, pairs can be covered by red, blue, and green in such a way that whenever I see U, V, W in that order, uh, I, will be in, I will be taking as edges only those triplets that have certain color pattern, certain fixed color pattern. So this is an edge, this is an edge, but this won't be an edge. So these are the hypergraphs, subgraphs of that, uh, are hypergraphs which have the precisely density equal to zero. Uh, similarly, as in the case of Erdes result, it, followed, it follows that whenever we have a hypergraph with density bigger than zero, and in here, it must have the Turan density at least one over 27. Uh, remark on proofs. So proofs are based on the regularity method for hypergraphs. For this result, we only use the following, yeah, we rely on the following graph theoretical result. So uh, the, the proof is that one regularizes, then does something, and then transfers it to a graph theoretic result, which is maybe, yeah, so I will state it. What it says that if I have a graph, normal graph with n vertices, uh, with, uh, with, uh, uh, it's n partite, so its vertices are divided into n parts. And, uh, and each of these uh, vertex classes has size L. And we have the following condition. The condition is a little bit weird, but this is precisely what we get. If we have degree of vertex v, v of vi to vj is a degree of vertex vi into set vj. And if this degree squared and summation over all vi is at least one quarter plus epsilon times L cubed, and m is sufficiently large, then g contains a triangle. So if, say, the corresponding bipartite graph would be complete, we would see the sum would be equal, the sum would be equal to L cubed, right? Because uh, V to Vj would have size L, I would square it, it would be L squared, I would sum it up over Vi, it also has size L, it would be V L cube. But I see one quarter plus epsilon of it for every pair. And now if M is very large in this respect to one over epsilon, it seems that L is irrelevant, then this graph contains a triangle. This is the statement. And although it's a Turan type statement, maybe somewhat interesting is I don't know, is that it is proved by Ramsey theorem. So how it is proved, maybe, should I show it or not? Uh, two slides. So, so 
it's then how the lemma is used before I show the group. Lemma yields a triangle in the link of a suitably chosen vertex. Uh, I will not, which will be the <coughs> apex of A for 3 minus n. So this is the lemma. And uh, so we have m much larger than 1 over epsilon. And here I will try to describe the proof. So between 1 over epsilon and m, we will put some constant delta, 1 over delta, which satisfies this hierarchy. Now I have a and j less than m, and we fix the, and delta, we may think of delta as a reciprocal to an integer. So delta, 2, delta, 3, delta, I have the same intervals to, m, to, to 1, it's not of course important. And I will, for every i and j, define the maximum gamma i j such that more than delta L vertices ui in vi have the degree bigger than uh, gamma i j to L. So this is the maximum multiple of delta, gamma i j, with the property that I see still many vertices with degree at least as big as gamma i j times L. So this is the definition. Okay, so uh, let's capital gamma j be a set of all those vertices. So if this is the set of all those vertices, then we have one thing, that there are less than delta L vertices uh, uh, that have, uh, in gamma ij, that have more degree bigger than gamma ij plus delta times L. So I don't have many vertices, so I have less than delta L vertices in VI, this gamma IJ should be in VI, sorry, uh, that, have the, uh, that, have less, uh, that have more than gamma IJ plus delta vertices. So I don't have many vertices of high degree. So that's, these are the orange vertices of higher than gamma IJ plus delta, because gamma IJ was the largest. Now. For every pair ij, I have gamma ij, and I apply the Ramsey theorem with 1 over delta plus 1 colors, and I can find, because m was much larger, I can find still r, which is 1 plus 1 over delta, uh, sets I can consider that these are the sets from 1 to r, uh, uh, where all pairs are monochromatic, that means that all gamma ij are identical and say they are equal to gamma. So what it means for in particular that if I look on the set B1 and look on set gamma 1, 2, gamma 1, 3 and gamma 1, R, because I, these sets are of size bigger than delta and I have more than 1 over delta of them, two of them intersect. So here I have a situation, here I have a vertex uh, so I have a vertex V1, which, uh, which is in V1, and, uh, and which has more, more than gamma L vertices in V2 and more than gamma L neighbors in V3. And then we are trying to calculate what is the density between V2 and V3. So if I have a, and I assume that I don't see any triangle by contradiction. So if I take a vertex in uh, uh, V2 in the green area, then because I don't have a, any triangle, it must have the degree less than 1 of minus gamma times L. On the other hand, if I take a vertex in the remaining complement of the green area, it will typically have the degree less than or equal to gamma plus delta times L, because gamma was the largest that I saw more than delta L. And then there are some delta L troublemakers where I have no control. So what it means for the sum? It means that these vertices in the green area will add me to the sum gamma times 1 min minus gamma squared. In the complement, they will add 1 minus gamma times gamma plus delta squared at most. 
And then plus these troublemakers where I don't have any control. But now, due to the fact that delta is much smaller than epsilon, simple calculation gives that this is smaller than one quarter plus epsilon, which is a contradiction with the fact that I had more than one quarter plus epsilon. So this way we find the triangle there. Sorry, no proofs anymore. So, uh, so these are two, two facts. Uh, so what is the smallest possible non-zero value for this two round uh, density if it exists? I'm sure it exists, so this is, this is not the last version, as Asaf knows, but we didn't succeed. Is there a three uniform hypergraph F with the precisely density of one over 27? So this would be a result analogous to Frankl and Firedi or Bolobashi, so whether this is a, indeed a two round density. Uh, how many copies of K, another question would be how many copies of K43 minus an H must appear in H if I have a epsilon P dense hypergraph is density P bigger than one quarter. This is certainly an extremely hard problem already for graphs. This was a hard problem investigated by Lovas and, and Simonovic and uh, Rasborov and recently solved or in general by Raya. Uh, what is the Turan density of KT for T bigger or equal than 4? And uh, I just wanted to say that generalization of that construction which where we split the right neighborhood into red and blue, if we split it into T minus 2 parts, would give such a lower bound. So is that the right order of magnitude? In particular, for T equal to 4, is this true? And that's still open. However, Something can be shown towards the direction, and in a couple of next minutes, I will talk about that. So one can strengthen the assumption of this weak uh, denseness. And uh, uh, so weak density was the density with respect to three sets. Now, consider a density with respect to a graph and set which will be a stronger concept. So consider a subset of vertex set and a graph, so blue set and green graph, and whenever I see such a configuration, I see a vertex and a, from my set and pair from the graph, I will be asking how frequently this is being matched by a hyper edge of the hypergraph. So, uh, so I am interested in such a, such a situation. So we are counting with multiplicity number of hyper edges of the hypergraph supported from, by vertices from X and pairs from P. And if this happens, uh, whenever I have X and whenever I have P, if this always happens at P percent of the possible pairs, then uh, we will call it that the hypergraph is one edge dense. Why one edge? Because I have one edge on three vertices, so I have no better uh, name for it. So for example, here I have three vertices, five edges, 15 situations. We did match it four times, so it, the density would be 415, so I'm interested. So whenever I see such a thing, I want to match it in P percent. So let me just remark that this concept of denseness is stronger than uh, the, the weak denseness and uh, one, how one can see it, that one can take a graph uh, which is just a Cartesian product of y and z. Uh, so having defined this, we can define the Turan density for that concept and with that concept of Turan density, one can then prove that the Turan density of K4 is one half. Uh, the lower bound follows from the same random pair construction I was discussing uh, earlier. Same thing, a little bit. Uh, one needs to verify something. And, uh, and proof of the upper bound is, relies again on regularity for hypergraphs, Ramsey-type arguments. So, 
So then we consider one more than strengthening. If we have one edge dense, we could have two edge dense. So uh, consider two graphs. And whenever I see a one green, one blue, and whenever I see a two pass uh, with one green edge, one blue edge, I will be asking how frequently is this situation matched by a hyper edge. And it, so this is, so I have a set of these two paths, and this will be, this E of PQ will be the number of those which are matching these two paths. So again, I, if I am given such a thing, so I am interested when it is matched. And I want to be matched always in P percent, and then it's to P to edge dance. So again, this concept is stronger than the previous one. One can easily observe it. And uh, in this case, and it, in fact, it's a lot stronger, because one can show that two round density of a complete graph on two to the t vertices is at most t minus two divided by t minus one. And this is, we can find the lower bound for t equal to 2, 3, and 4. But there are some gaps, as you will see. So what it means, that if I have this concept of denseness, then uh, k4 I see already at any positive density, but not k5. k5 has density at least one third, but k6 to through K8 has density one half. K5, we know just it's between one third and one half. K9 and K10, we don't know. But from K11 to K16, we know it's two thirds. This uh, K11 uh, follows from uh, the result of Graham and Chang, who considered a colorings of a graph which uh, has e have either uh, multicolored or monochromatic uh, uh, sound. So, so and, and using that, we get this bound. And similarly, we have some other colorings using some simpler, I'll say, observations. And due to this fact, because we can't produce, we could consider also concept for quasi-randomness, but we, here we cannot show the quasi-random lower bounds so due to that, I didn't talk about quasi-random concepts, but about the concepts which are tense. So that, because sometimes it's denser. It's lower bound. Anyway, so this is the remark. Uh, so we know such a, such a hierarchy. Uh, one could, of course, ask, what about three edge dense? If you had two edge dense, one edge dense, so what about three edge dense? In three edge dense, everybody has density zero because that's already a strong quasi randomness. We consider some extensions for k uniform hypergraphs, but uh, I don't think I should talk about this today. So I will quit and I will wish Noga all of that, and we don't wish only happy birthday but happy many years to come. So, thank you.
that uh, if I take one set version for this and, and do the proof for that, it works. Kind of. Or actually, it's proved that way. Uh, but I use three set version because I wanted to compare it with other concepts. Right? Why are you using one side in the One side. Why is it considered one sided inequality? Just because of this last concept. I'm sorry, I have long back, so I now got it right. What is the question? So just because of this last concept, uh, the, the, the lower bounds we have here to obtain these inequalities, we, we don't produce the genuinely quasi-random hypergraphs, which, are, which have the same density on every blue-green pair. But we, we do the, those which have density at least. So in, for that concept, we, we need just, we can show the lower bounds only because of, uh, for the denseness. Do I make sense? For everything else, it's the same. But I did the quasi and, and so the lower bounds are quasi right. So but I just wanted to, I didn't want to jump from one concept to another. I wanted to have one thing graph. So, so. So this is for the lower bound in here. Is, is the density for the force wave example uh, for this uh, case the same as the two one example? Okay. So, so I, I, I don't hear. So for four three. For the famous force wave case, if you make this further restriction, you you describe the uh, construction, but I, I did the uh, I miss uh, notice what is the density. of for 4.3, it's one quarter for the big concept. Okay. For, that's it. One half is not five. Pardon me? Oh, okay. One half is not five. It, it does. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I, I don't hear well. Right. Okay. Yes, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, otherwise, uh, yeah, you could, uh, cannot go continue. Right, precisely, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes? Actually, I have to be honest, I haven't read their paper. Uh, so I looked in the abstract, and this is precisely what they say. I thought it may be empty <laughs> in that interval, but they claim to be only well ordered. So of course it must be somewhere empty if it is well ordered, right? But I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't study it, right? So the interval is pretty short. Right? Well ordered. I don't know what order type. I, but this is what their abstract says. This is what their theorem says. The paper is not too long, so if I would be more diligent, I would be better. <laughs> Any more questions? <clears throat> okay, so we have the last eight minutes. Was it too long? So the, how long did it go? Did that go too long? Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>